These are the steel connections every structural engineer should know. I've personally used many of these exact connections to design structures worth tens of millions of dollars, but discovering all of these has taken me years. Connections are arguably the most important part of any structure, and in this video, I'm going to expose you to the most popular ones. To begin, I'll go over the different types of base connections, then I'll go on to knee, splice and apexes. After this, I'll dive into beam to beam and beam to column connections. And finally, I'll finish off with bracing and some special bonus connections. So whether you're new to connection design or you just wanna level up your skills, stick with me and let's get started. All right, so first up, let's go through some base connections. Simply put, there are two common types of base connections, a pin connection and a fixed connection. A common example of a pin connection to an I-beam looks like this, and a fixed connection looks like this. In both types, the I-beam gets welded all the way around to the base plate, and then the base plate gets bolted to the footing. For the pin connection, the bolts are located on the inside of the flange, and for the fixed connection, the bolts are located on either the outside only, or both the inside and the outside of the flange. Fixed connections can also come in various other arrangements that include the use of stiffeners, but for simplicity, this is what it looks like without them. For SHS, RHS, and CHS base plate connections, a similar sort of detail is usually provided. However, typically pin connections do not use any stiffeners and consist of two or four bolts, while fixed connections use stiffeners with four or more bolts. Also, the bolts used in these connections are either cast into the concrete in various forms or can be installed after the concrete has been poured using chemical or mechanical anchors. Okay, now let's move our way up the structure and go over some knee, splice, and apex connections. First things first, for anyone who doesn't know what these connections are, the knee connection is the connection between the portal frame rafter and column, a splice connection is a connection between two beams to make them continuous, and the apex connection is a connection between two rafters at the ridge of the structure. Now, starting with the knee connections, one of the most popular types is the bolted moment end plate. In this connection, the end plate gets welded to the end of the rafter, and then the rafter gets bolted to the column flange. The welds between the rafter flange and the end plate is typically a butt weld, and the weld between the rafter web and the end plate is typically a fillet weld. Bolts are usually positioned on either side of the top and bottom rafter flange, and between these bolts runs a parallel column web stiffener. There are several different variations of this type of connection that you can do, including the use of gussets, but two of the most popular types is when you make the rafter flange and the top of the column flush, and the other is when you make the rafter continuous over the top of the column. Now, besides the bolted moment end plate, there are two other common types of knee connections, and they are the direct weld and the mitre cut. Both of these connections clearly don't use any bolts, and because of this they almost always require our next connection type which is the splice. Starting with the simplest version we have the bolted end plate splice. In this connection the end plate gets welded to the end of the rafter and then the rafters get bolted together. Similar to the knee connection the welds between the rafter flange and the end plate is typically a butt weld and the weld between the rafter web and the end plate is typically a fillet weld. Also this connection frequently includes a gusset plate between the end plate and the rafter flange which can help increase its capacity. Now the other type of splice connection that I wanted to share with you is one that uses flange plates and web plates. In this connection a flange plate gets welded to one side of each rafter and one of the rafters gets a web plate welded to it. In both cases on the other side where the plate is not welded the plate gets connected to the other rafter using bolts. There is actually another version of this connection where everything is bolted, but the more common variation is the welded one. Okay, now similar to a splice for an apex, the most popular connection type here is also a bolted end plate. And similar again, this connection can be done with and without gusset plates. Although one variation I do want to mention in this connection, which can also apply to knee connections, is when you have a haunch. A haunch is often used at the knee and at the apex of a portal frame structure to increase the bending moment capacity locally and because of this the connection looks a little different. In this variation the end plate gets a lot bigger and to account for this extra rafter depth the bolts also become rearranged. Besides this though, the general methods remain the same. All right, next up, let's go through some beam to beam connections. First up is the fin plate. In this connection, one beam has a plate welded to the web and the other beam has its flange coped and is connected to the other beam via its web using bolts. Typically, the plate gets welded to the web using a fillet weld and the number and size of bolts is dictated by the amount of shear force that is needed to be transferred. Also, the top flange doesn't always need to be coped and the plate can be extended, but if you do opt for this type of connection, you may need to take a closer look at the torsional effects. Next up is the end plate connection. In this connection, a plate gets welded to the end of the connecting beam and the bolts go through the end plate and to the adjoining beam's web. 
Again, it's pretty typical for the flange to be coped to minimize the torsional effects and to get the load as close as possible to the center of the adjoining beam. Another type of end plate for beam to beam connections that is common is this one here. And as you can see, this time the end plate gets welded to the entire end of one of the beams and then that beam gets bolted to the adjoining cleat on the receiving beam. For this type of connection, there is also typically a stiffener on either side of the receiving beam's web. Okay, and the third connection type is the bolted angle. Here the two beams are connected together using an equal angle with bolts through each beam's web. Like the others, this connection also typically has the flange coped, but unlike the others, it doesn't involve any welding. Alright, next let's look at some beam to column connections. The first one that I want to look at is the web side plate connection. This one is an extremely common connection and here a plate typically gets fillet welded to the column and then the connecting beam gets bolted to the plate. Similar to the beam to beam connections, there is also an angle connection with bolts you can do and there is also an end plate connection too. The other type of connection that I wanted to cover here is when the beam runs continuous over the top of a column. Two of the ways this could be done is like these examples here and I also want to point out that many of the connections I have displayed in this section could also be used with RHS, SHS or CHS columns too. As you can see, even with closed sections, the general configuration stays the same. All right, now let's go through some bracing connections. For struts, there are two types that are commonly used, slotted and cap and fin plate connections. For the slotted type, the member gets a literal slot cut into it and then is welded to a plate along these slots. The other end of this plate then gets welded to the web of the joining beam. Another variation of this connection is to instead have this plate bolted to a fin plate, which has been welded to the joining beam. This second configuration is a bit more construction friendly for bracing connections in a portal frame, whereas the first type I showed you is more suited to a truss. Now for cap and fin plate type connections, a cap plate is welded to the end of the strut, and then a fin plate is welded to the cap plate. The fin plate is then connected to a plate coming from the beam using a series of bolts. Okay, and of course, wherever there is a strut, there is going to be a tie, and for cross bracing like equal angles, a fin plate connection is commonly used. In this connection, the fin plate gets fillet welded or butt welded if required to the beam, and then the angle gets bolted to the fin plate. All right, and now for a couple bonus connections. The first one I've got for you is the pearl and cleat connection. In this connection, a rectangular cleat gets welded to the top of the rafter, and then the pearl and gets bolted to the cleat. Also, if an extra high purling cleat is required to meet architectural requirements, often a thicker cleat is used, and then if an even taller height is required, often an equal or unequal angle is used. Okay, and the other bonus connection I want to share with you is for fly bracing. In this connection, an equal angle is put on a 45 degree angle on both sides of a rafter. At the top, the angle gets bolted to the purlin web, and at the bottom, the angle gets bolted to a small cleat, which has been welded to the rafter flange. Anyways, we've covered a lot of different steel connections in this video, and if you do want to continue learning about steel, you might want to check out this video here, where I walk you through how to design a steel beam using both hand calculations and software. As always though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.